Hi guys, it's Mary and it is Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time and the storms are, if not done, then in a break and so at least for now we've got power and we're gonna we're gonna soldier on through our card today and just know if I drop off suddenly you know what's happened. So let me get over here and be sure that I am transmitting. I think I am but you never know. Technology being, you know, what it is looks good it's looking like it's trying yes i see pictures of my hands moving that's good hey karen appreciate you joining today and thank you very much it's kind of girly i decided it would be a girl card uh, mostly because i wanted to play with jar of flowers and that seemed like a good idea hi Jean. hi barbara appreciate you joining hope everybody's having a good week hi christine debbie appreciate you joining me all right, so a couple of things. Um, this is a fun fold. You can't tell looking at it like this. I saw this card on the Split Coast Stampers this week, and I changed it up just a little bit so that it would be a, a tent card. I, I like tent cards. Why do I like tent cards? Because I have to take pictures of cards, and tents are much easier to um, get a good picture of. Hi, Faith. Hi, Amy. Hi, Sandra and Donna. I appreciate you guys joining. Hi, Pam. Hi, Jeffy. Um, I appreciate you joining. So anyway, I like a tent card because it's a lot easier to get a good picture of. For some reason, these kinds of cards, although that's the wrong proportion, but these kinds just don't um, photograph very easily, at least not for me. So this card today uses two new stamp sets. The first is called A Grand Kid, and as you might imagine, it is um, actually aimed at grandchildren because, you know, grand, but it's Really, you know, there's enough sentiments in here that don't specify grandchild or child at all. Um, so, for example, no amount of money could ever show how much I love you, but here's some anyway. So it's perfect for a gift card holder or, a, you know, do people even give $10 bills? No, they probably give $100 bills with all the inflation since I was a kid. Um, so smart, so fun, so sweet, and so wonderful. You are so loved. We... Um, so proud of you. Congratulations. So these are kind of generic, which means this is a really useful set, even if you're not a grandparent. The second set I used is called Jar of Flowers, and this is a photopolymer set. It's a reversible set, uh, which means that these particular stamps, in fact, you can stamp one direction and get the detailed image shown here, and then you flip the stamp over on the block, and ink it and you get the um, the solid image so you can you can detail and fill all with the same the same stamp now I didn't use this but I'm going to show you uh, because when I was building the card I I did actually make a jar and that seemed like a good idea and then I didn't need it but I kept it so I could show it to you okay hey um, Marianne and Lindy and Rosie I appreciate you joining so let me show you how this card works you can see the front the back oops rogue dimensional gosh darn it and then when you open it up it's got a trifold so this is called a trifold tri flap fun fold and you can put the flap kind of anywhere but this made sense to me so i've got to an extraordinary granddaughter on the front and then so smart so fun so sweet and so wonderful on the inside and then opens up to happy birthday with room to write um, you could actually also make this, if you if you made a card holder here, a gift card holder, then this could have, uh, you know, the money can't tell you how much I love you, but here's some anyway, and then you could open it up and have the card. So this is a nice little versatile fold. Change up the, uh, the paper and the images and turn it into a card for a grandson. So there you go. And then on the envelope, I put best grandkid ever, and I colored in the letters a little bit. And then a little bit of this paper. Now, yes, I know my paper goes this way. I decided that kids don't really care. They're not going to look at this and go, can you even believe that she put that paper on with the stripes going up and down when they go side to side on the card? No, they're not going to do that. Probably not even the parents. Okay. All right. So let's get started. It's pretty easy I have too much stuff in the way here okay now this will all be all of the card cuts will be on the blog tomorrow as will a picture of this template hopefully you can see it so you're going to start with a 
a regular, a full sheet of cardstock, and you're gonna do a little scoring at the halfway mark on both sides. So at four and a quarter, and at five and a half, and then we're gonna cut part off. Here's the thing. You could change this up if you, if you did want, let's say, a card that folded this way, then you could actually do that and just cut this top flap to be smaller and go in from the top. Okay, so it's a pretty versatile template. You can play with it and do it however you like. Hi, Barbara. All right. Um, and hey, honeybee. How are you today? Appreciate you joining. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to set this aside. And instead of pulling out the score tool, I'm just going to use, hopefully I won't screw up and use the wrong. It's been known to happen. I use the wrong slider. So first we're going to cut the halfway mark on the short side. So that's four and a quarter, like so. And then we'll just turn the cardstock and do halfway on the long side, which is five and a half. You see, there is a reason to do math in school. Okay, now, as you can see, I've got my quadrants here. This is gonna be the card base. This is going to be the flap that folds in, and so this is the part that has to leave. Now I'm gonna do this, I'm actually gonna do this in one cut um, because I am just that awesome. But you could, in fact, let me just do it in two so that we don't confuse things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut at the four and a quarter mark and I'm going to bring my cutting tool down to the five and a half mark, okay? If you wanna get all bold, let's just do it. You could go all the way to the six inch mark. Because remember from our template, we're cutting off this six inches to make this flap smaller okay so instead of being five and a half inches tall it's really only going to be four and a half inches tall make sense so that's what i'm doing instead of cutting at five and a half i'm just cutting at six to save myself a cut okay so i've brought it to where my um my guide mark right there is at the six and then i'll just raise this up she says and go ahead and put the side of the cardstock over here at five and a half. Okay. And then actually it's not going to be at five and a half. It'll be at six. See, I can confuse my own self without even trying. And I'm going to pull this to me just a little bit guys, so I can see where the mark is. And it's going to be at four and a quarter. Is that making sense? Is the math making sense to you guys? If it's not, let me know and I will attempt to fix that. Hi, Donna, appreciate you joining. Hi, Pat, I appreciate you. Okay, now while I have everything here, I'm going to cut this half inch out. So I'm going to put the side of the cardstock at the half inch mark, and I'm going to come down to the four and a quarter mark on my guide tool, okay? like so. And then because I'm all bold like that, I'm going to use my snips just to cut that little piece out. Okay. And that's it. That's how hard that fun fold is. So then you can see what we've got here. Here's our card base in tent mode. And then here is our inside flap in flap mode. There we go. Done one each fun fold and I love it it's not a whole lot thicker than any other card so you can kind of decorate it well and to that end let's take a look at everything I have to decorate now let me show you this is the jar I made that I ended up not needing so what you do is you um, I stamped the tall jar in misty moonlight I, I have my uh, my little ink spot from my May in, co uh, in color pumpkin, uh, paper pumpkin kit. So I did that in misty moonlight and then I took the small jar and turned it with the solid portion facing and I inked that in pool party and stamped my water. And then I stamped the, um, 
the stems in Tuxedo Black. Now here's a little dealio. The stems, let me show you. You can see here, let me use my handy bone folder. This has a straight edge at the top and this has a jaggedy edge at the top. Probably is intuitively obvious, but I'm telling you this because it was not intuitively obvious to me. This is the part that goes up because it's supposed to look like it is being hidden by the rings at the top. Okay, so put the straight part up. Just saying. All right, that's my little tip for the day. I know you're tickled to death. All right, I've got my envelope and its flap is all ready. And then I've done a little bit of card cutting and stamping to get us ahead of the game. And I have used the, my favoriteest thing ever, stitched so sweetly, to stamp my front um, sentiment. And it is this sort of next to smallest of the rectangle dies. And then my inside sentiment that I cannot get off of my, there we go is this larger label die, like so. And then I also stamped the um, flowers. These are the roses. I thought they went well with my DSV. Um, I stamped them in tuxedo black on Whisper White and cut it with the largest oval in the stitch shapes dies. Okay, so now you'll be so ready to case this. Oh, so ready, okay. So let's go and head and do a little adhering and putting together, and then we can do some coloring of that image. So I've used Purple Posy for my mats, and my card base, in case you didn't catch it, is just jade. So let's go ahead and uh, do a little adhering. We'll do a little adhere reading. A little adhere reading. So we got pretty lucky on the weather. It looked, it was very dark when I made my post at noon to remind you that I was going to be here. It was a dark and stormy day, and I thought, ooh, we may not actually have power when that comes, but it looks like it has split and gone that way. And I thought it was from Bertha or Bernard or Hagrid or whoever it is that's out in the uh, Atlantic, but it isn't. Okay, so this is my card front, and what I'm going to do is take some of the here we go. Some of this beautiful gold twine. This is quite possibly my favoriteest trim that I've ever used with the exception of linen thread. And linen thread is just a workhorse, but this is absolutely gorgeous. And I can tell you that it makes a really nice double loop bow. This is one, this is the gold portion of the trim that is in the greenery. I believe it's this combo right here. Yeah. Let me just double check that, you guys. I, I hate to tell you something wrong, because I've never done that ever in the history of ever said me never, because I have done it many too many times. Uh, yeah, so this is the Forever Greenery Trim Combo Pack, and you get both pieces in the, both rolls in the set. And this is a lovely, it's really kind of like muslin, I think. In fact, that's what it looks like to me as muslin, a kind of a loose weave muslin. But this is the gold, the gold trim, and it's awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a glue dot on the back of our card front to adhere this, and I'm going to wrap it around three times. Three times a charm. And we'll just stick a glue dot there, and then I'm going to stick a glue dot here and hope I don't get it too messed up while I'm wrapping it. But it helps if you've got the glue dot set. Okay, so I'm wrapping and, and I want it to have this, uh, can you see how it's, uh, it looks like it comes together in the middle? That's because it, it does. And that's what I want it to do. So we're going to wrap and then we'll just wrap. And it doesn't have to be perfect as you as you build it, but the closer it is, the easier it is to do. And then we'll um, go ahead and adhere that to the glue dot on the back. And then we can kind of play with it a little bit, and we'll be ready to go. Oh, Donna, five degrees, that is a little brisk. 
that is a little brisk for me. Okay, so then we just put, just play with the front a little bit to make everything kind of even. And there you are, you're ready to go, okay? And then this is going to, well, that isn't right at all. And then this is going to pop on the card front. Now remember, how that looks is not so hypercritical because we're going to cover it with our image. Speaking of, let's go ahead and color this. I've used a bunch of Stampin' blends. Um, you can certainly use as few or as little as you want. There are a lot of good colors that work with this. Um, just so you know, the in colors, all except Cinnamon Cider, I believe, have a Stampin' Blend coming up on the 3rd of June. Um, so I am, because I don't have those yet, I'm using my Dark Mint Macaron for my leaves. That seemed like a suitable substitute right now for just Jade. And I'm just going to color the just these larger leaves like this. And I'm not getting, yeah, you know, you can get real head up about about shading, but there's part of me that thinks really don't need all of that much extra shading on an image like this, but you know, it's it just depends on how much coloring you want to do. So I'm doing really, really classic, very, very artistic, probably Sistine Chapel worthy uh, coloring there. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my um, Poppy Parade light Poppy Parade is actually one of the colors that works nicely with the um, Flowers for Every Season DSP, which is nice. And I'm just coloring these large roses. I grow roses now, and so I'm qualified to grow and color roses. Yes, I actually had... I have a rose that is, no kidding, just blooming like crazy. Really, just blooming like crazy. Oh, it's Bumblebee that doesn't. Okay. Thank you, Donna. I appreciate that. I knew one of them didn't. I'm sorry that Bumblebee doesn't. Because that's a good, a good yellow. I would like to have that. Okay. So I've just colored everything in. And then I'm going to kind of go back and do just a little addition of some color here. Just a little bit where I think there might be some shading. Not getting too head up with that right there. And then let's uh, go ahead and use some Flirty Flamingo for the other large rose. This one looks like my pink piece now that I'm making it Flirty Flamingo. I just now realized that's the pink that my rose is, is Flirty Flamingo. Who knew? They did not say that color on the package. I know you're shocked, right? You would have thought for sure they would identify that as Flirty Flamingo. Would mint macaron? Yes, that's what I just used, and I think it's uh, I think it's pretty good. It's a different um, level of color, but I think it's a nice complement. It works pretty nicely. Which is not to say that having the actual Just Jade is not the best plan, because it really is. I am absolutely going to get all of the blends just as quickly as I possibly can, because I love them. And I would like one in every color under the sun. Well, the Stampin' Up sun. How about that? I don't need every color, but I would certainly like to have all of the Stampin' Up colors just because I think it would be fun. On the other hand, not having all of them makes you think outside the box a little bit, right? And that there's nothing wrong with that. Thinking outside the box and using a little bit of, um, you know, you know. Ooh, Melon Mambo, that's right. We are having a Melon Mambo now, that is awesome. I've forgotten that and that'll be a great color. So I'm using my Light Daffodil Delight on these um, smaller roses. I have a pink rose. I need a yellow rose. I am pretty certain I need a yellow rose. My husband likes the roses, but he keeps saying, Mary, why are we growing roses? You can't eat them. And I said, uh, well, that's true. But it's just because they're so pretty. They're so pretty. They're so pretty. We love them because they're so pretty. 
Oh, thanks, Tish. I, I am kind of an artist, there is no doubt. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take my uh, dark purple posy, and I'm coloring these. I don't know what these are. We're going to call them floral doohickeys. And we're going to color these in purple posy. Geez, aren't you glad I didn't stamp this image 47 times? You would be thinking, good Lord, Mary. Pre-coloring, would that have worked? You could have done that, Mary. Okay. And then let's see. How about my bl balmy blue? I think these little berries are going to be balmy blue. Which is actually not a bad uh, mix with the Misty Moonlight. Just saying. There. Okay, so that's it. Easy peasy. Really not very technical. So let's go ahead and um, pop this onto the card front with some dimensionales. Dimensionales. These are apparently Latin dimensionals. Don't know why, but they are. Okay. Here we go. Uh, you guys, seriously, we are less than a week from this new catalog going live. Can you even believe it? Which means we're less than a week from me putting in orders for special bundles and for my shares. So the special bundles will last out through the 17th of the month, but the shares you've only got until Monday next week. So if you want to share... I'm keeping them open for a minute. I'm getting close to having to close them. But if you want to share now is the time. That's weird. Huh. <laughs> I, D, yeah, so you didn't like the cutting of the dimensionals. Yeah. It, it's a little bit, it, it can be a little persnickety if you're not careful, but... Yeah, and you know what? If you don't cut your dimensionals, all the fi many of the finest people on the planet do not cut their dimensionals, so do it. So I'm just using a little liquid glue, and I'm centering that under this image, like so. And I thought about using new in-color um, enamel dots, but I thought, let's go girly girl. And because I love them so much, I'm using some champagne rhinestones. These have to be my favorite thing ever. I don't know why, but they just, I really love them. If I could put them on men's cards, I probably would. Ooh, am I being not, you know, I'm not being very sensitive there. I'm sorry. Maybe some men would like that. I don't know. But I don't want to insult anybody. So I'm going to just shut up now. Okay. Now I'm going to take a double length of my gold trim. And tie a bow, a bow of simpleness, just a simpleness bow. Have you used the pick tool to help with the small pieces? Oh, that's a good question. So I wasn't sure. Maybe D was having trouble using the dimensionals after they were cut or getting them cut in the first place. Not sure where the issue was there. Look at that. My hands aren't working so good. You know what I did the other day, because I'm acknowledging the issue. The first step is to acknowledge if you have a problem. Oh, Lordy. Just let's get this right. I bought a set of compression gloves for my hands with copper in them. Now, I don't know about copper. That may be all woo-woo crap. But I will say that when I wear the compression gloves while I'm typing, my hands do not hurt so much. So either it is the copper or it is the compression or it is some combination thereof. But they do actually help. Um, I can say, even with the pig tool, I just... Yeah, but D, if it hurts your hands, it hurts your hands. That's just it. I mean, and there's, you know, it's it's really not that critical. Now, if we were talking fussy cutting, I'd be like, oh, yeah, you've got to fussy cut. No, I'm kidding. Of course I'm kidding. Not really. No, I am totally kidding. All right. So I'm just using a little scrunchy glue dot to adhere my bow. My bow right there like that. 
And I stuck a little rhinestone under there. And I'm going to put a couple more on the other side of my sentiment like that. Because I love them. Have I mentioned I love them? I love them so much. Yes, so much. There we go. And uh, when I get done here, I will trim my tails. But right now, I'm just enjoying the glory of those beautiful things. Okay, so let me set that aside, and we will finish up the inside of our card. We're going to make, it's a regular, pretty generic inside. Let's see, where's my piece? Here, we're going to have that, and we're going to have this. And I'm going to stamp, happy birthday. Day, Mr. President. No, I'm not going to put that because that would be dumb. Yeah, so maybe the gloves, maybe the gloves. I don't know what it is, but I know that they, it helps my hands feel better when I'm wearing them, if I'm typing. And actually, it helps me sometimes when I'm crafting, but they are seriously ugly. Okay, do you guys watch the show SWAT on TV with... Um, Oh, Shamar, what's her, whatever. He was, he was on Criminal Minds, and now he's the main SWAT guy. So the gloves look like his SWAT gloves, which have you noticed he wears all the time, like even when he's at home. They're tactical gloves, people. And he wears them like when he's just driving home or going to get dinner at the restaurant. He just wears them, and that's weird. It, it's weird. I just don't think anybody would actually wear them all the time like that. But okay. Anyway, that was kind of a, <laughs> a <laughs> bunny. <laughs> you know what's really weird is <laughs> out of the corner of my eye I can totally see my hands doing this <laughs> on the screen so I know I'm looking really goofy all right so I've just uh, stamped happy birthday from a grandkid in Poppy Parade on my whisper white panel and now I'm going to use my glue and I'm going to glue another piece. I picked a different DSP, but this is the same DSP that I use, that I'm using on my inner liner or in my, in, on my flap, right? So it's going to kind of all coordinate together. It's like such a good coordination. You know, I'm pretty sure Pantone will be calling me one of these days for my input on the color of the year. I'm pretty sure they're going to want that because of my massive artistic prowess here. There we go. So just a little strip of the DSP on a little strip of purple posy. There might be his racing gloves. I don't know who looks at the gloves. I don't know, but but really, like they'd be right here in your face. Oh no, never mind. I got it. But you're right. You are right. He is not unpleasant to look at. Definitely not unpleasant to look at, and also not gonna fib. The gloves are even make him kind of look hot. It's just that occasionally the military person in me says, "Wait, what?" <laughs> That's like somebody in the army going around wearing their battle rattle to go to <laughs> the grocery store. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. But, but I can usually get past it because he is pretty, pretty to look at. Nothing like a man in a tactical uniform. I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. Okay, and I've just adhered that at the bottom, and then we'll put that on the inside of our card. I like how the purple posy goes with the Just Jade, don't you? It's kind of pretty. This is such a cheery card, and so girly. It's such a nice, pretty, girly card. I like it. Because you know me, I, I'm a girly kind of person. Maybe you've noticed. <laughs> I'm laughing because, no, <laughs> I'm really not that girly. Occasionally, I remember to put earrings on if I go to the grocery store, only because I have the studs sitting there on my on my dresser. Okay, now, this uh, middle part, there's only one confusing thing about it, and it is that it is almost the same height as it is wide. So, I highly recommend that you use glue to put everything together here, because it is entirely likely that you will try to put the DSP on the cardstock sideways or the cardstock, the matted piece on the trifold sideways. I'm not saying that I've ever done that because, you know, I'm a trained professional, but I'm saying you might want to use liquid glue. Okay. Isn't that a pretty piece of paper? I love this paper. And then we'll ad <coughs> adhere it. <coughs> Oops, need a drink. Apparently, that is the signal I'm talking too much. Hey, Rosie.
Well, if your granddaughter would love this card, I think you need to make it for her. It's not that way for sure. Okay. It's pretty easy, and I'm sure you have all of these goodies since they were in the pre-order. I hope you are feeling good, my friend. I'm assuming that you are watching this from home and not the... Uh, Not the practicing facilities. Got a little glue right there. Okay. And now, remember earlier I told you that I had stamped my sentiment and cut it out with the Stitch So Sweetly die. And I'm just going to adhere this with some liquid glue. Right in the middle. Isn't that a great sentiment? I love that sentiment. Now, I'm going to tell you what. So here is... This is, I, I'm pretty certain, based on what I'm about to show you, that this is designed, was thought to be a front sentiment. And then the inside sentiment was um, this one. We must be related. So smart, so fun, so sweet, and so wonderful. We must be related. I actually think a grandkid would need to be in the older range to understand the tongue-in-cheek cuteness of that. But that's just me. If you think your kids, grandkids would get that, then that's a great sentiment. But I think that that might be lost on younger children. Okay, so that's all there is to that. That's all there is to that. Now we're going to um, pop our card front on with Stampin' Dimensionals. Good for you. I'm glad you're behaving. Wait, let me, let's uh, make sure we uh, qualify that. You are behaving well, correctly? You said you're behaving you did not specify that you were behaving well, Rosie. So just, you know, clear that up for me. All right, we're going to pop this on with dimensionals. Because even if Unfold wants a dimensional. Man, I just butchered that strip of dimensionals right there. I don't know what I was doing. Maybe I was trying to get used to my tactical SWAT gloves. I don't know. They do feel a little weird. I tried wearing them at night, and I didn't like it, so I stopped. Somebody I read online said they wore them at night, and and not and I got the impression not during the day, but that seems kind of counterintuitive, unless you're just totally counting on that copper doing something. And I'm not convinced that I believe all that. But, you know what? They actually now have, uh, like, magnets. They make blankets for horses, for, like, race horses and endurance horses and stuff with magnets in them. So apparently there is some science to those, I don't know, magnets which means maybe there's some science to copper or it's the science of persuade people to buy things because you can make it sound good and you can get a celebrity to say it's a good thing i don't know but i bought in i bought in okay here we go and we're gonna pop this on to the front of the card like a shoe here we go oh that is so pretty it's just so pretty and i'm gonna cut my tails there we go. Just like that. Now, I'm going to, on the front of my envelope, I'm going to stamp this sentiment that says, Best Grandkid Ever. And I'm going to do it in Poppy Parade. I'm behaving very well, and I will continue to do so. The medical hobby shop. That is exactly right. You absolutely want to stay out of there. Okay. So I'm just centering this up. And wait a beat. Need to... Okay, there we go. And then I thought, now you could leave it like that because it's pretty cute, but I thought, why not just put a little color in there? So I pulled out some of my Stampin' Write markers, like my Flirty Flamingo, and I just very gently colored in these block letters. They just kind of looked like they needed to be colored. It's like, it's like Stampin' Up! said... We're going to put this in there, and they're going to need to color them. They will not be able to keep from coloring those words. We'll do that. And then we'll... I see, I've also got Melon Mambo. And you need to have kind of a light hand, because, you know, you can go outside the lines without meaning to. Just saying. I kind of like it colored in, don't you? Isn't that fun? 
And actually there's quite a few different color combos that you could have used. Yeah, Karen, the picking is taking a minute. They're trying, they're working to get back to normal. Does anybody ever think we're gonna be back at normal, what normal used to be? I don't, I think this is the new normal. And part of me believes that it needs to be the new normal. Cause I think, I kind of think COVID was the planet going, hey, you, wake up. You're, you're screwing us up. You're screwing it up for us. Okay, so that is colored in. And now I'm gonna take this piece of Dispa, 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 and I'm going to put it on my envelope flap. And we're gonna be done ske. We'll be done ske. Okay. You can see my piece isn't quite long enough, but that's okay. I'm gonna fix it. And no one will ever know the difference, eh? Just do your fussy cut where you can fussy cut. Get rid of the DSP excess, like so. And then come back across and just do a straight cut like that. And done. Boom chakalaka. One very easy, actually, Two, very easy. See what I love about this trim? See how the how it kind of unravels and it makes this gorgeous tail. I love it. I just really quite love it. I'm gonna roll that down because my glue dot's showing. All right, and there we go. What do you think? You like it? I think it's fun. I like it. And then you open it up and look here. Whoa! And it's so easy. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you spending part of your Thursday with me. Um, get the special bundles. This it's time to order. This is a good time to order. Get the shares. And don't be missing out. Watch for there's a new host special and a joining special starting next Tuesday. If you didn't see it, check my blog post. It'll all, it's all out there. I will be back on Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern on my Facebook page for another tutorial. Don't know what we're going to do, but I will by then. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.